Okay, I gotta do this video on my smaller computer because the other one's cloning. It's gonna take a while and I need to make this video now while the ideas are still in my head. I don't uh, rehearse what I say. It's all spontaneous because I don't have a good memory. So when my memory goes, then I don't remember what I was gonna say. So I'm gonna say this before I forget. Remember in the last episode, we were talking about how little kids learn. Look up here at the upper screen where the yellow highlight is, and you see a 63 here. Well, if I could get the stupid thing to work. You see a 63 in, well, it just, that part that just turned blue. Um, remember how in the last the last episode I had shown on screen and we're going to return to it Genesis 1 3 and Psalm 90 verse 3 how both of them had a 63 in their syllable count well you see it's here also now it's real important to say that because by putting 63 here, Jesus Christ, or Matthew, because, you know, I'm not sure how, I mean, obviously the Holy Spirit told Matthew to do it this way. He is calling attention to the reader to look at Genesis 1-3 and to look at Psalm 90, verse 3, because he's using the same 63 syllable count. See, when, when, if you were learning it the way they learned it, when you saw a familiar number, just like we do, we associate it with other numbers that are the same. And it ends up being a really handy cross-reference or concordance. Because, you know, they didn't have indexes like we do. So how did they know that one Bible passage related to another Bible passage? Okay, one way, of course, is to know, oh, well, this has the same words in it that this other passage has. We do that, too. But yet another way is, oh, this is the same syllable count, 63. Remember when I said, I, I saw 63, 63 is, is in, in uh, Genesis 1, 3. And 63 sevens for the number of years that Israel was enslaved. Well, it's, it's 390 years after Jacob came to the land, and it was 10 years not, not in order prior to that, when the number of years that Joseph was enslaved. So the total is 400, just like God told Moses, I mean Abraham, and in, in Genesis 12 and 15 and 17. 15, really. So that's what 63 means, yeah. And in Psalm, Psalm 90, verse 3, it's the same thing. Because Moses wrote both of those passages in the same year, which was the year before he died. Very good. You remember that part of it, right? Okay. 63 also means seven years short of 70. All right? 63 means seven years short of 70. 70 is the middle period in the 1050 year increments that God designed from Adam's fall onward for the orchestration of time. I, I remember it's 490. And and some one person like Adam had to had to mature. He had to know Torah so well he matured. But they didn't have Torah then. That's right. So God taught him orally, just like you're learning now. Oh yeah, okay. And then and then in the middle, seventy years that was when everybody got to vote on whether they wanted to they wanted to earn. God and how many people had to vote 
in order for them to for time to continue. Well, only one had to, but it could have been many. If it was many, then the times would be good, and if it if it was just one, well, time would continue. Otherwise, it would end. Very good. And then the last 490, that's 490 and 70 and 490, that's 1050, Daddy. Yes, dear. You see? So what does 63 mean? Well, it, it um... Well, um, I, it means that, that the 70 isn't up yet. And, 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 and maybe it won't be. That's right. In Daniel 9, 483 weeks is how many short of 490? Seven. Oh, it's a seven like in 70. 70 times 7 is 490. That's right. And you see, that 63 has all that meaning. So when Christ or Matthew is instructed by the Holy Spirit to use it here, somebody who's used to learning like I just described as a kid, they're going to see that 63 and it's going to be real meaningful. It's going to mean all those doctrines I just described. It's got other meanings too. But that's the importance of the 63. Now, as you can see, this is Matthew. This isn't Genesis. This isn't, this isn't, you know, um, Psalm 90. This is Christ talking in Matthew. So it's like, well, you know, how come he's using 63 here? And I'm going to go through this more in the next increment, but I, but this preview of coming attractions, because we've got to go to Daniel. See here? Amen lego humin. What does that mean in my badly pronounced Greek? Believe it when I tell you. Amen. Believe it. Lego. When. you got the, the when is sort of implicit there. I'm saying... What I'm saying when I speak, who mean to you? Believe it when I tell you. And when Matthew's writing this, he knows that that's going to total 63 by the time he does it. And it's deliberate. Now notice some really important things about this. If he's counting the syllables to match another Bible passage that tells you immediately that the Bible passage you're looking at with the 63 is the original. In other words, you know, you got Bart Ehrman and all these other people saying, Oh, the Bible's been edited, and we, we don't really know if we got the original. Yeah, you do. And how come you know? Because if you're counting the syllables in your current piece to match the Old Testament with the same count, then you know two things immediately. The passage you got is the original, and what it's tagging here, Genesis 1-3 and Psalm 90 verse 3, those passages we have the original words so all those Dippy King James onlyists are proven immediately, immediately wrong. Because, honey, if there's syllable counting of one Bible passage in order to tag, cross-reference another Bible passage, then if the tagging, if the text is apt, then you know for sure, A, it's deliberate, and B, you have all the original words. Okay? Real important. You have all the original words. And notice, it's the original words. They're not in English. In fact, you can't even do this tagging 
in a translation. So you have to, so Matthew has to be written in Greek. Has to. And it's tagging something in Hebrew, in Genesis, and in Psalm 90. So then that means this is originally Greek, and that means the Old Testament was originally in Hebrew, for those who want to spit on the Jews and say it wasn't. Okay? Now I'm going to cover a lot more than that in the next increment, but I wanted you to just build on what you saw before because now we've got to go to a different number and show this same technique on a different passage of Scripture. That different passage is right down here. Okay? Daniel 9. Because as you can tell from the text, Christ is talking about Daniel. So how would you know that right away? See this? Right here? 49, 49, 49, 49. And what do you see down here? Look at the lower window now. See highlighted in yellow? What's the number? 49, 49, 49. I can't get it to 49. Okay, 49 and 49. So, now you already saw the 63 tagging. So you've got some familiarity. Now we're looking at the same technique, but with a different number. 49. And it's 49 down here. He is tagging Daniel 9. Now why is that important? Because in any passage of Scripture... It's, I mean, it might not be exactly the way I'm telling you, but based on what I've seen so far, at the beginning of every book, and sometimes at the beginning of a chapter, like here, there is the writer counts the syllables in such a way, he words the text and counts the syllables in such a way as to give you the first Seventh paragraph is a dateline. Dateline is like, you know, when you read the New York Times and it's got a dateline of August 20th, 2016. When is that article written? When is this text written? Okay? And remember what we said about 63 and how the five year old kid was, oh, 63 is the number of seven. That Israel was enslaved, and then when we left, and when when we left, it's it's the forty first year a after we left Egypt, and she was enslaved uh, four hundred years prior. So it's a total of sixty three sevens, which is four hundred and forty one. So you see, that's a formula, so that you remember more about the history. You remember more about the doctrinal meaning. Okay? Same thing here. 49. And same thing here. 49 in Daniel. Daniel is telling you that he's writing 49 years after X. And then you solve for X. And how do you solve for X? Well, X is going to have to be related to the text. That's the whole point of having a dateline. It's not simply to tell you when it was written, because the people getting it would kind of know that already. It was designed to turn it into a doctrinal lesson. Okay? What would be a doctrinal lesson that would be 49 years from X when Daniel writes? Now, for the people who got this, they got it right away. So they already know what 49 is because all they have to do is count back 49 years from the day they got the letter. But they pass it on to their kids as what the formula meant so the kids could remember the importance of 49. What is the importance of 49? That's the number of missed 
sabbatical years. That's also the number of years that had transpired by since the time the temple went down in 586 BC. Do you know how much screwed up scholarship there has been on this? Do you know that Eusebius thought that there were 70 years that were missed sabbatical years? No. There were 49. 49 times 7 tells you that was Rehoboam in 930 BC. That's when they started going missing. Which, of course, you would know if you read the text because Solomon was praised. And David was praised. Would they be praised if they missed the sabbatical years? I don't think so. Okay? So, Daniel is praying 49 years after the temple goes down. And what he's saying here is, you know, you can go look it up in your English if you're not too familiar with the Hebrew. He's basically saying, hi, I turned to the Lord and I prayed to a great and glorious God and, you know, who loves everybody who keeps your commandments. Yeah, and what was the number one commandment God had said? If you don't observe the sabbatical years, the temple's going down. Daniel had just been reading that in Jeremiah, which is the earlier verses, because the actual meter starts at 9-4. So he's talking, after reading Jeremiah, which is talking about the two 70-year periods, and Daniel himself is in his 70th year when he prays, 538 B.C., okay, um, approximately Bull, because, you know, he had just, he had just got been restored to power, you know. So when he's praying, he, that's why he's praying. Cyrus is taken over through, you know, Gobi Ross, the general, Darius the Mede, who's the uncle of Cyrus, is now in power. Daniel's restored to power. Many, many Tekulu Farsin had already happened, and the other people in the, you know, royal family of the, you know, I guess it was the nephew of Nebuchadnezzar. They're all gone now. Daniel's restored to power, and he knows this is his time to pray. Forty-nine years after the temple's down, the land has had its Sabbath, and it's time to pray. He's actually at the beginning of the 49th year. Okay. So Christ, or Matthew, really, because Matthew, not all of this text is what Christ actually said. Matthew pads it, you know, he says, you know, say, and, and, you know, because this is all narrative by Matthew, you know, and as Christ is coming out of the temple, his, his disciples approach him one by one and start pointing out the stones of the temple. Okay? So 49, by the time you get to 49, see, this is about the temple. 49 down here in Matt and Daniel's about the temple. The text is about the temple. So 49 is tying. You see the 49 here? Now the only question is, okay, but Daniel's talking 49 years after X. Christ has to be talking 49 years after X. And X is going to have to be related to the temple so what happened 49 years before 30 A.D.? That was when Herod started to rebuild the second temple. And it's parallel, therefore, with Daniel 9. Contextually, because Daniel 9 is praying so that the second temple will be built. You see how clever this is? So, the person hearing reading this text, seeing that 49 is going to be immediately reminded of Daniel 9. It's on the same topic. It's talking about the same writer. It's a definite cross-reference to him. And it, it's, it's very, what do you want to call it, witty. You see how important this is? We know now, therefore, that Daniel 9 is intact. We got the right words. We also know so we got the right words in Matthew because you'll notice it's counting the syllables that are here 
in Daniel 9 and relying on the reader to have done that so that as soon as he starts counting the syllables in the Matthew passage, he'll stop and go, oh, 49, he wants me to look at Daniel 9. And he'll know that before Daniel's name is even mentioned in the text. And so will we. Do you see how witty and how pithy and how valuable this is? 49 years before Jesus talks. That was when Herod started rebuilding the second temple. So he's using 49 because that was the number of sabbatical years that Israel missed. So it's not a happy number. But it is the length of time that Daniel waited in order to pray. So it comes to have the significance of diaspora. Daniel's praying to end the diaspora. Christ is using it to warn of an impending diaspora. And how do we know that? Just after syllable 49, what does it say? You see all this? Truly I tell you, there won't be one stone upon another. And by the time he gets there, he's at the 84 mark which is Psalm 90, verse 4. This is Psalm 90, verse 3. This is Psalm 90, verse 4, by syllable counts. You begin to understand that these syllable counts are ways of cross-referencing scripture, and they have the salutary effect of telling us, oh, gee, we can really prove we have the real words and the original words of Bible. Good morning. And I'll cover more about this in the next increment.